Testing. Good morning. Welcome to St. Anne's Church in Washington, D.C. Leading us in celebration this morning is our pastor, Monsignor Watkins. During today's Mass, we ask that you here in the pews with us please keep your face masks covering both your nose and your mouth for the safety of all. We also ask that those of you here please sing in your hearts only. Please rise for our opening hymn, Rejoice the Lord is King. I 
Christ the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing, and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we celebrate this solemnity in honor of Christ the King, the Lord of the universe, we bow down before our King, who rules our hearts with grace, compassion, mercy, and infinite love. Let us then acknowledge our sins before him, counting in faith upon that great grace, that he crushes those sins by virtue of his victory over sin and death through the sacrifice of the Mass. Lord Jesus, risen from the dead, reigning forever, returning in glory, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ Jesus, ruler of nations, Lord of time and justice of God, <laughs> 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God of good will. Amen, 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 amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe. Grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place and where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord.
is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me Restful waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul, he guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each in proper order. Christ the first fruits. Then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen. I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was thirsty, and you gave me no food. I was hungry, you gave me nothing to drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill, and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, But Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not ministered to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanksgiving is coming soon, this Thursday, and however you celebrate the national holiday, whether with family or friends, and perhaps for some of us even alone, a blessing to you all as you recount the many blessings and gifts the Lord has given you, and so many times unseen, just to reflect on Thursday in a very special way on those blessings. The very fact that we can even worship together is a great blessing. And know that the Lord is always with you. In fact, in light of that responsorial psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Even though we walk through a dark valley together as a nation at times during these very difficult moments, the Lord is always with us. Let's reflect in light of Thanksgiving and the coming season that follows in preparation for Christmas on the virtue of hospitality, which is really much, very much at the heart of the season as we share food together and gift giving and spend time with family and friends. Hospitality. It comes from a Latin word, hospice, which means both a guest and a stranger. Interesting how the Latins like to play on words with double meaning. We make the stranger a guest. We welcome them into our homes. We welcome them into our hearts. The person who is out there, we bring close. We make the stranger 
a guest. That's hospitality. At the same time, in a different respect, how many of us might have had that experience where we've invited someone into our homes, into our hearts, we've shown hospitality, but that guest, for whatever reason, whatever the circumstance, becomes a stranger. They become estranged from us. So hospitality can turn on itself. We try to welcome them in and we get hurt. We get rejected. We get judged. It's why we're always told by the British there are three things you don't want to talk about in polite company through hospitality. You all know them, right? Politics, sex, and religion. It gets you into trouble nine times out of ten when families get together and friends get together and start talking about politics and religion and sex. It just falls apart. How many of you know that experience where someone has come into your home and the whole thing goes sour and they leave angry? There's been a misinterpretation, a misunderstanding. The guest has become a stranger. Well, this is what our Lord is talking about today in the gospel, hospitality, and how it can work both ways. The sheep and the goats. The sheep are showing the stranger true hospitality. They're welcoming in someone and making them a guest. I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. I was hungry, you gave me food. Naked, you clothed me. Ill, you cared for me. You know the litany of charity here. Because we look at the human person, this incredible person that God has placed, not on, not in our way, but on our way, to say, here's a moment to remember and recognize me. He wants us to recognize each other through each other, and we come to minister to him through those most in need around us. And they can be a family member, the person sitting right next to you. So we show hospitality by welcoming them, making the stranger a guest. And they say, but Lord, we didn't see you. He says, oh no, whatever you did for them, you were doing for me. And then the goats, they're on the other side. They had an opportunity to serve but they estranged people. They pushed them away. They did not welcome them. They did not bring them close. They said, I can't get involved, maybe. They made excuses. I'm too busy. Someone else will care for them. Whatever we did not do for them, says the Lord, we didn't do for him as well. So this hospitality thing is key, and it brings us then to the Mass, which is the great act of the Lord's hospitality. Why? Because in a moment, as we say at every Mass, this bread, this wine, this food, if you will, is for you and for the many so that sins may be forgiven. The Lord shows infinite hospitality. He goes out and finds the stranger. And this is true not only for Catholics, it's true for everyone, living dead, past, present, future. The eternal act of hospitality spiritually is now applied across the board. So he goes out and he finds every stranger. He invites every stranger to come to his table where he can feed them with food and drink, where he can clothe them with his love and mercy, where he cares for them with infinite love and compassion and frees them from sin when they were in prison. And it's interesting how we should reflect on his hospitality because if the Lord has shown us this kind of tremendous grace and favor, then we in turn are invited to share that with people in need around us so that we see the living icon in the people around us of Jesus. This is a great message of hope for people in need if we could but see them and treat them 
as we would the Lord himself. So, wishing you a very blessed Thanksgiving. Mindful of the Mass is the great act of Thanksgiving, the Eucharist, by which we give thanks and praise to God who has made us guests at his table. And we are not estranged. We are not forlorn. We are not without hope. He is here, he is present, and he feeds us with the best food at the table of his sacrifice. As one church, we proclaim our ancient faith when we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joyful hope, let us now offer our prayers to God in the name of Jesus, his Son, who reconciles everything on earth and in heaven himself. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Gregory, and all who serve the Church, that they may be teachers of God's peace and ministers of reconciliation among all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Church and parish community may be a faithful witness to the love and mercy of our Heavenly Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, our Redeemer, may restore to health and hope the sick, the suffering, the recovering, and the dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That men and women may recognize the great need to labor in the Lord's vineyard and respond generously to his call to life in the priesthood or in consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners who are ill or recovering, for all who are imprisoned, abused, or suffering in any way, that they may be delivered from every evil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our deceased relatives and friends may be welcomed by the victorious Christ into paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the God of mercy and compassion will hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Remembering all souls this month of November, we ask that the infinite mercy of God be applied to them as we seek through the intercession of the most incredibly powerful woman to do this for us in her, her son's name, Our Lady of Mercy the Pieta, when we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death, amen. Kindly be seated now for a few announcements. Today's second collection is for the Archdiocese for the Military Services. The Archdiocese for the Military Services serves all our veterans. It serves, of course, millions of people in uniform and their families and dependents. So thank you for your generosity as we thank them in a very special way for their service that keeps us free relatively and allows us to worship in freedom of religion. 
Please take home a copy of the bulletin and note the following. A word of thanks to our youth group of the parish for planting two new great myrtle trees here on the playground side and there are commemorative plaques there to mark the spots. They're very small trees now, but in about 10, 15 years, they're gonna be at full stature. And so we thank the youth for that investment. Again, Thanksgiving Day is Thursday and we have a mass here at 10 a.m. And we invite you to come and give thanks that day. We'll live stream the mass at 10 a.m. If you're unable to be with us, come and give thanks to God. Thursday, December 3rd at 7.30 in the evening, we have a live streamed Advent concert here in our church featuring musicians, Grace and Aurelius Gorey, Melissa Coombs, Natalie Plum, and our director of music, Bob Wright. We want to thank Bob and all who make possible these concerts that bring such joy to us, especially this time of year. On Saturday, December the 5th, from 10 to noon, our parish will participate in the annual Tenley Town Winterfest, and we'll have self-guided tours and an 11 a.m. live stream tour by our parishioner, Sal Savaggio. Also on the 5th of December, Troop Scout 100 will sell Christmas trees from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the school parking lot. Every year since 2005, St. Anne's has provided gifts to 250 children in need at Christmas. So visit our website to sponsor a child or a family. St. Anne's has always been very generous with this annual charity. One of our parishioners, Mike Apolucci, will be available after Mass at the Yuma Street door to answer any questions and to collect gift cards. We'll continue doing this through December 13th. Thank you for your generosity to children in need at Christmas. Finally, we don't really know what we're going to do for Christmas. We have to wait until the District of Columbia tells us what their plan of action is, if there is a change. Right now, as you know, in Phase 2, we're allowed to have 100 persons in the church for Mass. I think we're doing that fairly well. And the 11 o'clock Mass, I think, bridges right on 100 persons. So if we have to go back to Phase 1, which is what we were in from basically March through June, that allows only 10 persons total. So that would be a disaster. We don't want the mayor to do that, but let's pray that the right thing happens. So we'll keep you posted, but right now, one way or the other, we'll have masses at 2 p.m. on Christmas Eve, which we're allowed to do, 5 p.m., 8 p.m., and then Christmas Day, 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. We'll have more details about how to sign up for that as we learn more from the district. St. Anne's always relies on your contributions to maintain our parish ministries and these live stream masses. Please help us to continue that ministry by making an offering our website at stannedc.org slash give. And to all of those who join us by way of electronic media, we welcome you and send our blessings to you as you join us in spiritual communion at this mass and receive by way of that communion the graces that flow infinitely to you. Thank you. Our hymn during the preparation of the gifts is Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown Him with Many Crowns, the Lamb upon His throne, hark how the heavenly anthem drowns. soul and sing of him who set us free and hail him as your heavenly king through all eternity crown him the lord of life who triumphed o'er the grave and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save his glories now we sing who died and rose on high who died eternal life to
to bring and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord of love, behold his hands and side. Downward bent his burning eye at mystery so bright. Crown him the Lord of peace, whose power a scepter sways from pole to pole that wars may cease, absorbed in prayer. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your faith for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all the nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory.
We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and time again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. And to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may be truly a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. 
Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for your servant, Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, and your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, remembering all souls and in particular, Erminia Navarro. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. On us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace, grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall.
Then shall the king say unto them upon his right hand, We are grateful to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for nominating and elevating the first African-American Cardinal, Cardinal Wilton Gregory, the Archbishop of Washington. The consistory takes place in Rome on the 28th. We are overwhelmed with joy, and in the new year, we hope to get Cardinal Gregory here to celebrate Mass with us and offer him our congratulations. We're th thankful for so many gifts at St. Anne's as your pastor, simply to say thank you. Thank you, and to mean that to every group, 
every organization here, and every individual who supports us and comes to pray. Maybe between now and Christmas, or in the new year, you might think about making the special resolve to bring just one more person to church. Be that guest that makes the stranger at home. Many of you have found your home at St. Anne's, so have I. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. A blessed Thanksgiving to all of you. Our closing hymn is To Jesus Christ, Our Sovereign King. To Jesus Christ, Our Sovereign King, Who is the word salvation, All praise and homage do we bring, And thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus Victor, Christ Jesus Ruler, Christ Jesus Lord and Redeemer. Your reign extend, O King, be mine to every land and nation, for in your kingdom, Lord divine, alone we find salvation. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, ruler, Christ Jesus, no.